Welcome everyone, Tactical Lich here, and today we have another High Elf replace sent in by Rider of Rohan, featuring a fairly uncommon unit. Yes, that's right, we are looking at the Great Eagles on the battlefield. Usually High Elves have better single entities alternative, given that the Phoenixes and Dragons are much more powerful than the rather mediocre Great Eagles melee stats and their lack of armor piercing. So they often just end up as mounts for characters. However, sometimes they do have a great use given their high speed and relatively cheap cost. For the rest of the army build here, we have some Ilarian Reaver Archers for the skirmishing firepower, Dragon Princess for a more sturdy melee cavalry and a very elite high elf front line. White Lions of Shreys backed up by a couple Sword Masters of Hoeth. Leading the army, Tyrion on horseback, supported by a Mage of Life coming in with Earthblood and Regrowth. On the other side of the battlefield, the Chaos Dwarves. A lot of chaff in the front line there. Goblin Laborers backed up by some Hobgoblin Cutthroats. And further back, the Chaos Dwarf Warriors as the backbone of infantry guarding the Magma Cannon. For mobility, some Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders with Spears and the Bull Center Renders the regular ones. So no anti-large, just armor piercing plus shields. On the far side of the battlefield, two Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits ready to flank the high formations and leading the army, we have a Sorcerer Prophet of Death on his Lamasu. He has brought his item, the Showers of Blood and Darkness, giving him access to healing every time the high elf caster casts spells. Interesting enough, no Spirit Leech, just Fate of Buna and Soul Blight for the death spells, and of course, the Lamasu mount has the bounce spells of Withering and Enfeebling Foe. That's it for army builds, and now let's see what the Great Eagles can do in this matchup. Great Eagles when compared to other monsters of the same tier, for example the Manticores, which costs exactly the same as the Great Eagles, they are not exactly great in supporting team fights simply because they do not have terror. Without the ability to induce early rout on enemy units, they are less effective in pushing through enemy lines or disrupting back lines. However, they do make up with their impressive speed at 110, one of the fastest units in the game, allowing them to catch up with whatever targets they pursue, though their lack of armor and armor piercing doesn't really do them any good in this role. Still, in this fight, they will have the optimal target to chase down. For example, the Sorcerer Prophet of Death on Lamasu doesn't have the most armor anyways, so even a single charge from these great eagles will do some pretty noticeable damage on the Lamasu. Now down on the ground there, Dragon Princess slamming into Bull Center Renders, both doing some pretty decent damage to each other. Though it seems that the Bull Center Renders are taking the worst of this trade, as they do not have the kind of armor to take the charge from the Dragon Princess with 80 charge bonus. The Soul Blight reducing weapon damage, yes it is nice, but it's not exactly enough to protect the Bull Center Renders from their doom, as they are now already wavering in terms of leadership. At the back there, Sword Masters of Hoeth getting absolutely blasted by the Magma Cannons, especially with the leadership debuff of the Burnt Effect they will be pushed off for now, while the rest of the Elite Melee Infantry are pushing in to drive back the Goblins and Hobgoblins so that they can threaten the more elite backbone of the Chaos Dwarf Warriors. Now on the mobility fight here, a second unit of Bull Center Renders charged in, doing some pretty nice impact damage on the Dragon Princes who are now being sustained with a regrowth, though one of the Bull Center Renders has been routed and probably would not be coming back being threatened by the other Ilarian Reaver Archers. Behind them some Hobgoblins caught some Ilarian Reaver Archers, eliminating some of that skirmish fire power. They even got hit by the bound withering spell of the Lamasu, helping the hobgoblins to break them off, though they are now being charged by more reaver archers from behind. The Sorcerer Prophet of Death is getting very desperate here, unable to actually get in a melee fight constantly hunted down by the double eagles, he is trying to squeeze out as much value as possible by using up all his spells. Now seeing that the Magma Cannon is blasting away some Elarian Reaver Archers and doing some pretty nice damage, the two Great Eagles will be turning around to hunt down the Magma Cannons without any Bull Center renders to protect. The Magma Cannon essentially became a sitting duck with nothing to screen out any incoming threats. That means the Great Eagles are free to push through enemy infantry and hunt down the artillery piece. At the far back, the Vanguard deployed Sneaky Gits are coming back, actually managed to finish off some tattered Sword Masters. So a pretty nice ambush for them, though they still took some noticeable damage from the tattered elite unit of High Elves. 
Now over here, Chaos Dwarf Warriors being tied down by White Lines of Trace. This is not a fight they would enjoy due to their lack of armor piercing. A little bit of a fate of Buna going on top of the Sword Masters of Hoev, trying to drain away their health, though it doesn't actually do that many model kills. So far, they only lost one model despite having over 180 kills. Over here, Chaos Dwarf Warriors being cut down by White Lions of Trace. They are not having a good time. Same goes for these Chaos Dwarf Warriors, especially now that the Sword Masters of Hoef are charging into their flanks. Now, the Fate of Buna, a very costly spell, did do some impressive work on the Sword Masters, draining their health away and making some of them weak enough to be killed in melee combat. But here comes a regrowth to undo much of that work. Still on 97 models, they are pretty much still fighting in full strength. At the same time, the Sorcerer Prophet of Death has gone from flying all over the battlefield to crawling on the ground. He's still fleeing away from the two Great Eagles who already managed to finish off the Magma Cannons. Not sure where the artillery model died, but it is definitely not on the field anymore. They will continue their pursuit on the Sorcerer Prophet of Death, who has been running for his, fleeing for his life for the entire game. Not able to really dish out any damage with his... Decent melee stats and weapon strength. Now, Chaos Dwarf Warriors basically standing still to get cut down by Source Masters of Hoef and White Lands of Trace. Both Santorenders are charging in, doing some nice impact damage, but they are now left in this prolonged melee grind, surrounded by Elven Swordsmen who have literally spent centuries studying the blade. You can see that while the Swordmaster did take some damage, they quickly recomposed themselves and starting to fight back, dragging down the HP of the Bull Center Renders. Another Earth Blood is cast, healing up the High Elves, especially keeping the Swordmasters alive, making the Bull Center Renders struggling even more here. A massive Soul Blight is going down on the this entire vicinity of High Elves, reducing their armor and weapon damage, but that's not gonna matter too much here, as the Chaos Dwarf Warriors simply do not have enough DPS to punch back, while the Sword Masters and the Great Eagles manage to drag down the Bull Center Renders. On the far side there, Sorcerer Prophet of Death 1v1ing the Great Eagles. Overall, the Sorcerer Prophet on a Lamazu is a slightly better melee combatant than the Great Eagle. And as you can see here, he is fighting back hard, taking out huge chunks of health from the High Elf monster. But unfortunately, the HP difference really come in clutch for the Great Eagle, and the Lama Su Sorcerer Prophet of Death might just be routed, especially with the second Great Eagle coming. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna survive. It is trying to land to dodge away enemy units, but alas, it has been routed, and with the Sorcerer Prophet of Death routing, their leadership is breaking on the Chaos Dwarf side. You can see quite a few units are now wavering and routed. Army losses is hit, and the High Elves will be claiming this victory. GG to both players, and once again, big thanks to Rider of Rohan for sending in this replay. The Double Great Eagles really using their speed to stick to their intended target, the Lamasu Sorcerer Prophet of Death, getting some really good value throughout the game, especially with their speed, allowing them to maneuver around the battlefield to snipe whatever targets they want. For example, they just dove on the Magma Cannon and was able to silence the Chaos Dwarf artillery, preventing it from carrying for the Chaos Dwarves. The High Elf Elite Infantry slaughtered a bunch of Chaos Dwarves, the Hobgoblins and Goblins, but one of them got absolutely roasted by the Magma Cannon, so not much damage value on that one. Illarian Reaver Archers got pressured by the Wolf Raider mobility, so most of the heavy lifting was done by the Dragon Princess instead, who was sustained by the constant regrowth. Tyrion didn't do too much damage, so I basically forgot about them throughout the game. For the Chaos Dwarf army, the Sorcerer Prophet of Death was very limited in terms of battle performances, only able to use some Fate of Buna to do damage, but then being hunted down by the Great Eagles, he was not able to do much melee damage. Magma Cannon got sniped out, and the Bull Center Renders, one of them got slammed by the Dragon Princess, the other one got some really good damage throughout the game, surviving till the very end. While the infantry, Chaos Dwarf Warriors, and the Hop Goblins got absolutely slaughtered by the High Elf Elite, so not much to say about them, though some of them, for some reason, managed to earn back some good value. Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders did some good damage to the High Elf Mobility, but that's about it. This is all for today's battle, I hope you all enjoy it, and if you want to see more multiplayer action of Total Warhammer, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.